Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop and today is Saturday, September 27th. Now in this video today, it's more of a follow-up from yesterday's video about the tropical system over in the southern Bahamas, uh, north of eastern Cuba, uh, that's most likely is going to become tropical depression Emilda and uh, that will be affecting the southeast United States. How? Well, we'll just take a look at that and see uh, the conditions for that. So first of all, let's go straight into the satellite imagery right now and looking at the two storms in the western Atlantic Ocean. First of all, you got Hurricane Humberto with 145 mile per hour winds and Tropical Depression number nine over in the uh, southern Bahamas, just to the uh, north of eastern portions of Cuba. Looking at the um, uh, satellite view of Hurricane Humberto, boy, this system is really wound up. It's a Category 4 storm right now, approaching Category 5. That's winds of 155 miles per hour. Right now it's at 145 miles per hour. But uh, it looks like it's going to bypass Bermuda and go between Bermuda and the uh, east coast of the United States. However, it's going to take a brush with uh, Bermuda. With a storm this big, it could definitely affect Bermuda with strong winds and more so with uh, strong uh, waves and uh, high surf and uh, uh, tidal surges along the islands there. Not so much for the east coast of the United States other than strong rip currents generated from the swell that will be produced by that massive Hurricane Humberto. But more concern right now is what's going on over in the uh, portion of the southern Bahamas to the north of uh, Cuba, eastern Cuba. And right here on the visible satellite imagery, you can start to see somewhat of a circulation developing. It's definitely beginning to circulate, which is the indication that it is now a tropical uh, a, a tropical depression. And it's probably going to get stronger as it goes up into the uh, northwest into very warm waters off the coast. Those water temperatures are in the mid to upper 80s across that region. And conditions will be favorable for, uh, for uh, um, uh, development. Let's take another look at this in the uh, uh, infrared satellite view. It shows more enhanced view. And there you can see some big thunderstorms developing across the northwest portion of the circulation and also in the northeast portion of the circulation and even to the south. So, yeah, it is getting wound up. And it's right now it's over rigid terrain and has issues with the circulation being disrupted by the higher terrain of the mountains and the high hills of eastern Cuba and over into Hispaniola. Anyway, as it moves away from that, it'll uh, come into a smoother terrain, which will give it more availability for uh, developing and getting stronger. Let's take a look at the computer models. They're a little bit different from yesterday and a little bit more encouraging, I suppose. So let's take a look at the global forecast system, the U.S. model. Let's put that into motion. And there you can see the two storms. Uh, there you have Humberto, and then over here you have the uh, Imelda, uh, Imelda <laughs> uh, out of the, I have really bad problems with names. Anyway, Imelda uh, coming out of the Bahamas into uh, uh, southeast portions of Florida, just off the coast where Hurricane Wa or a Tropical Storm Watch is in effect out in that area there. Continuing the motion, this is for um, Monday at 2 o'clock in the morning, going into Monday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. There it is, east of Cape Canaveral, St. Augustine, Florida, ramping up a little bit more, perhaps a strong tropical storm, even maybe a Category 1 hurricane. Looks more like a strong tropical storm at that phase. And then continuing into the uh, 2 o'clock hour on um, Monday, uh, Tuesday rather, there we have it off the coast of Georgia, southeast of uh, coast of South Carolina. Looks like a fairly uh, ramped up storm, perhaps a Category 1 hurricane associated with that. But notice the circulation stays offshore and uh, continuation with the motion there. It moves off to the east. It's pulled away from the coast. So uh, the time during um, Sunday night, Monday and Tuesday, uh, the, the coast of Georgia and southern South Carolina could be scraped by strong gusty winds and uh, moderate to heavy rainfall. And also the seas will be very rough uh, out on the Georgia waters and the South Carolina waters. And that's also going to generate strong breaking waves and uh, strong rip currents. So uh, you got to keep an eye on that. Could be some beach erosion associated with this storm. All right, let's take a look at the model that's been doing much better than the uh, the GFS. And this is the uh, Canadian model, the GEM, the um, 
Global Environmental Multiscale Model, or the CMC model. And uh, let's put this into motion here. And it brings the storm up across the Bahamas, just like the GFS, and brings it a little bit further east of the coast of Florida and then east of the uh, coast of Georgia, spreading some rain near the on the coast and near the coastal areas of Georgia, some uh, moderate to heavier rains across eastern South Carolina, southeastern North Carolina. And then it goes off to the east and away from the area. And this motion begins somewhere along about Tuesday afternoon. It begins to pull away, and the showers and the winds begin to subside across the region. All right, let's take a look at the, uh, the, the ECMWF. That's Everybody likes that model for some reason. Well, it's been pretty good lately. I guess that's why one of the good reasons to keep an eye on this model. Uh, looking at the forecast there, uh, there you can see it basically doing the same as the other two models, Basically following the uh, Canadian model, keeping it further east of the coast of Florida and Georgia, moves it northward though, and then kind of stalls it a little bit and spins around just to the east of the Savannah River entrance off the coast of South Carolina and just stays out there. And here we are now. Uh, the date here is Wednesday at... Um, uh, 3 o'clock in the morning, I think, uh, 4 o'clock in the morning, and uh, then it pulls it away. And then it kind of stays stationary once again going into Thursday and Friday, and then it brings it back up into the mid-Atlantic coastal states, North Carolina, uh, up into the Delmarva Peninsula, even some moderate to heavy rains moving across a large portion of South Carolina with this scenario here. However, Let's go back and look at the uh, forecast tracks. Uh, looks like the majority of the computer models are indicating that it's going to be coming up the coast of Florida, off east of Florida, and then curving to the east, moving out to sea. Uh, looking at the ensemble uh, models of the... Uh, the Global Ensemble Prediction Service, GEPS, and basically shows the same. Some of the models uh, in the ensembles uh, still has it maybe breaking to the west, but the majority of them, and this is the uh, the mean model here, uh, shows the what's called the controlled model. And uh, I think that's the, um, the uh, GEM or the CMC. And it pushes it off to the east, northeast, and away from the coast after about two or three days. So it glances with the coast. Uh, and of course, we're going to go with the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Has it coming up east of the coast of Florida, very similar to what the uh, the uh, Canadian model has indicated, perhaps reaching hurricane status as it's due east of Brunswick and St. Simons Island, uh, but well offshore, and then curving it off to the east, and then moving away and weakening uh, somewhat as it moves uh, further away. All right, let's take a look at some of the forecast rain, because that's Probably the most significant event with this, the rain and the strong breaking waves on the beaches, which will cause some beach erosion. But looking at the uh, the rainfall total, this is from the Canadian model, since it's the one that's doing the better job. And it shows, obviously, most of the rain near the core of the motion of the center of the storm out in the open waters of the Atlantic. But it does show... Uh, some rains moving along the Georgia coastal areas uh, into South Carolina coastal areas, perhaps one to two inches of rain uh, for those areas going in through Monday uh, and into Tuesday. All right, and one other model to look at, the uh, uh, the ensemble model, the uh, forecast from the National Weather Service offices, and it indicates that, again, yeah, most of the heaviest rain, and this is uh, some very heavy rains, perhaps up to 12 inches offshore, but onshore, perhaps, perhaps portions of eastern, central, and northeastern South Carolina could get significant rains associated with this if it does travel a little bit further inland. But if it stays a little bit further offshore, that heavier rain also will stay offshore. Coastal Georgia could see um, one to two inches of rain, perhaps maybe some isolated pockets of three inches of rain, again, if the storm uh, moves closer to the west, but if it goes further to the east, like perhaps we're thinking, uh, then lesser amounts of rain. A lot of people have been asking me, what about Statesboro? What about Little Wissy? What about Metter? Well, you might get some rain out of that, but I'm really not all that concerned. You're probably not going to get much wind at all over the areas. Perhaps everything west, a good uh, couple of miles west of Interstate 95, you're not going to see too much out of this other than some clouds, breezy conditions, and maybe some showers to be associated with it. All right, going back to my website, savannapat.name, I keep you updated right here all the time, and uh, this is a good place to get great information and also my uh, views from my telescope right now. 
I'm not getting many views of the telescope simply because the sky is cloudy with uh, these showers moving in across the area. Speaking of showers, uh, we do have some showers passing across the coastal areas of Georgia moving into southern South Carolina. Uh, this is as of um, well, about 4 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. And more showers will be developing throughout the nighttime hours. Uh, so we do have a chance for some much needed rain, but most of the inland counties, they're not seeing much out of that whatsoever. All right, but the forecast here is calling for uh, lesser of a chance for rain tomorrow. Uh, temperatures in the middle 80s. Monday, that'll be our better chance for rain. Maybe some rumbles of thunder. Usually with tropical systems, you don't hear much thunder or see any lightning, just rain. Um, and then uh, Tuesday, clouds, rain chance still at 50%. But then Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, uh, becoming fair to partly cloudy, or at least partly cloudy. But look at those temperatures in the upper 70s and lows in the low to middle 60s. Uh, well, that's going to be more like autumn. We are definitely in the season of autumn now, the autumnal equinox a couple of days ago. So yeah, finally the autumn weather will arrive uh, as this um, uh, storm system passes off to the east of us. So right now it looks like uh, beyond that, things are relatively quiet for a while, but we'll have to keep an eye on Imelda and of course Humberto. Humberto is going to move well to the east of us, but Humberto's actually strength is what's causing uh, Imelda to be drawn further away. So that's, uh, I suppose, some good news uh, associated with that. Well, thanks for watching. Thank all those who have been supporting my uh, my channel and my new members. Thank you very much. And uh, if you'd like to join my channel, please go right ahead. <laughs> I would love it. Help support this channel and support all the equipment and the necessary uh, software and hardware that I need to keep this channel up and running. All right. Well, I'll see you later, perhaps tomorrow with another update. Hopefully the storm system will be further, further away. Um, and uh, we'll keep an eye on that for you right here on my YouTube weather channel. Thanks for watching. Bye.